For the second half of the color assignment, we're going to be working with doing some research on color and understanding words that associate with that color, as well as cultural meanings for color. This is really important for us to understand the connotations behind color and will help us make better choices when we're selecting color for our project. So there is a template for this file. It's an InDesign file that you'll find in the learning management system. I have it open here. It's more of a structure this time. There's gonna be a lot of things we're gonna to have to add to this file, but it should really keep you on track and help you set up the file the way we want it to be set up for grading. So the first step is I'm gonna go ahead and do a save as on this document as we always do, just so that I save this and I can keep the template in case I need it again. All right. Then we have the directions here in the middle. So we need at least 25 words that relate to the color that you select, and then eight cultural associations for that color as well. The color that you'll use will be the one that you labeled from part one. So out of all of those 50 swatches, you labeled one color with the RGB and the CMYK breakdown. And that is what will become the basis for this project. But when you're doing this research, remember that you're going to pick the closest pure hue to the color that you used. You're most likely are not going to find information about the specific shade of orange or pink that you selected. So you really want to look at what is the closest color and that's the color that you'll mostly be researching. It might be helpful for you to do some of this research ahead of time and kind of jot it down in maybe a notebook next to you or on a text file on your computer. But I have that here next to me. I've looked for some of these cultural associations. I found words related to the color. These can be found through the textbook, the color textbook, but also through research on the internet. Sometimes the cultural associations may also be partially listed in the related words and that's okay. But you want to, again, have at least 25 words related to the color and at least eight cultural associations. So the next step will be bringing that color from part one into this file. So I'm going to go back to my part one file and get that color that I labeled. I'm going to go ahead and just copy and paste it. So select the swatch, go to copy, come over here and paste. So now we have that swatch because this large area where the color floods is where that color needs to go. So the first step will be making this entire large area that's now black being the color that you're using. So there's a couple ways to do that. I can select it and I can come over here and enter the CMYK or RGB value since we know that. But I'm gonna go ahead and use the eyedropper tool. So I have this large area selected. I'm gonna come to the eyedropper tool and then click on my swatch. And now I have the color where I need it, which is step one. I can go ahead and delete this. I'm gonna move the directions off of the file since I don't need it here. I'll move it to the side just so I have it handy. And we need to come with a unique color name. So think of a Crayola crayon box or shades of nail polish, right? They always have clever, fun names. I don't want you to write green here or blue or even turquoise. I'd like you to try to get creative of how you might name this color. So I think for this one, I'm gonna call this Juniper Moss. You can also use up to two typefaces of your choice on this project. So you can't use more than two. You're welcome to use just one. I'm going to go ahead and change the typeface here to something else. I'm going to go with a little heavier weight. All right, there we go. So the next step will be getting words into this file. So you're looking for those 25 related words. Those can be anything that relates to the color green in this situation. You might consider this more of an olive green or an army green. So those might be other words that I might use, the word army or olive. So any words that relate to the color in some capacity. We're going to use the text tool to do this. So I'm going to click on that type tool and I'm going to draw and create a text box over here. I'm going to enter environment. I'm going to change the typeface here. I'll use a, a secondary typeface as well. Then we can make the type bigger by changing this. You can also enter a value here as well, which can be useful. Another one that can be really handy is the shortcut to make type bigger and smaller. If you have it highlighted like I do now, I can hold shift command and then comma or period. Comma will make it smaller, period will make it larger. So that can be a handy way to do that without having to go up to that menu. And then I'll move this over onto the document. So we're gonna create sort of a word cloud. We wanna play with words of different sizes. We can rotate them, which I'll show in a second, to create some kind of an interesting collage of these words like a word cloud that will all relate to the color that you selected. I'm gonna make another text box, but I wanna show you one other thing. Be careful to not make text boxes over on the side. You'll notice I'm always doing them off of the page, and that's because if I hover over this large color field, you'll notice that the cursor changes. It goes from a dotted square to a dotted circle. And what InDesign thinks you want to do here is that you want to type in this box. 
which isn't really what we want. I actually don't want to do that. So I'm going to undo that and go back. So that's why you'll notice I'm always drawing text boxes over on the side and then moving them over into the document. All right, let's just do a couple more. This is why it can be handy to have this stuff figured out ahead of time. Just might make it a little faster for you as you're working on it. I'll do some mixing too. I'll put one in the other typeface too. All right, another tip on this assignment is sometimes it can be hard to work with all these text boxes because they're gonna start layering on top of each other. And if you can imagine as you get up close to 25, it can be hard to actually select the text box that you want. So you can always make these smaller like this, which can be really handy to allow you to keep them a little bit more neat and orderly. But I wanted to show a little shortcut for this too. It's a really cool trick in InDesign. You can actually also use the fitting commands on type boxes. So if I come up here to object and go to fitting, you'll notice that the fit frame to content is available. And when I do that, it's gonna make the type box fit the type exactly. So that can be a really good shortcut to know. It's option command C, which will sort of make things a little bit easier to work with. So we want you to play with scale. Again, you can play with up to two typefaces. You can also play a little bit with rotating type. So you'll notice if I click on one of these and I go to the corner, I get the ability to rotate. I'm gonna hold shift so that I keep things a little bit more neat and tidy. I don't really want arbitrary angles here. I'm really just gonna work with horizontal and vertical orientations, which is what we recommend for you as well. So sticking to just those two orientations is a really good idea. So again, holding shift will allow you to make sure that you're just turning it to be vertical. And you can sort of see how I'm starting to create this idea of a cloud. So you'll create an area with 25 words that will be interestingly presented using scale, rotation, typography in terms of the typefaces you select, but you're also welcome to change the color of the type in the word cloud too. You can also play with different weights like I showed. You're welcome to highlight this text and play with any of the weights within a typeface as long as you're only working with two different typefaces. One last tip I'll give that can be useful in this assignment since we're creating a lot of typesetting here, a lot of text boxes, and chances are you're going to reuse some of the typesetting. You definitely need variety here to make it interesting, different sizes, you know, mixing between two typefaces if you decide to do that, different weights. But there's a high likelihood that there's going to be some typesetting that you're going to want to repeat. So you can actually come in and select one of the words that you want to use the same style but change the word and have it selected and you'll notice if you hold down the option key these double arrows come up and if you hold option and then click and drag you can actually duplicate that word and then I can come into the text and I can change it to a different word and that just can be really useful again because chances are you're going to be repeating some of this you could even still change the scale a little bit if you wanted to but it might make things go a little bit more quickly on this project to create those 25 different words and make this word cloud. So that should help you build that word cloud, those 25 words that you need to lay out that relate to your color. The other thing we need to do next is those eight cultural associations. So those need to be organized in one area on the page, all eight together. A lot of our students put it in the lower right hand corner, but that's just because that's what the example shows. You can put it there, but you can really put it anywhere you want as long as it's all together and organized. So I'm gonna create another text box, a little bit bigger this time, since I know I'm gonna have a lot of associations here and I wanna make sure they all fit. So I'm gonna start with a header, so I know what these are. And then I'm only gonna do one, but you need to do eight. So this comes from the textbook, but also research. It's really interesting to start looking at what color means, particularly around the world, Sometimes a color might mean one thing in one part of the globe and maybe something completely different or the opposite in another part of the world. And so as you're designing and thinking about the audiences that you're designing for, where your piece will be seen, potentially where it's printed or shown, it's important to understand these things. 
Color is a really important symbolic tool for communication, and that symbolism is different for different cultures, and that's really what we're getting at here and what we want you to learn about. So it can be interesting to understand what these things mean. So again, I'm only gonna do one, you need to do eight. So one I have here is that in the Western world, green symbolizes luck. So that's something that we associate with luck is the color green. Also in the Western world, we consider green associated with money. So that's another one. And that's one that's listed as my related word. So it's okay. Sometimes you might have overlap between the 25 associated words and those cultural associations. That's absolutely fine. It's almost expected. So don't feel like you have to hit on things that aren't in your word cloud. Also, as you're doing your research, it could be useful to fill up your word cloud with things related to these cultural associations. So now I'm gonna stylize this a little bit. I'm gonna use a similar header treatment. And I'll make sure I only use two typefaces. So I'm gonna to switch to that other typeface I'm working with. And then I'm gonna go ahead and put this down in the lower left-hand corner. So again, you would need eight. I'm only gonna do one, but I think you get the idea here. So we're getting closer. The last thing we have to do is put the CMYK and RGB breakdown on this again. And that needs to be organized together. It can be anywhere you want in the composition, whatever works and makes it look the way you want it to. But that does also need to be included. I'm just gonna use X's. I don't exactly remember the breakdown, but you obviously should have numerical values here that you will be using and that relate to the color in the background of this document. So sometimes the fitting won't do the width of the box, it'll only do the height. You might've just noticed that happen. That happens when you have multiple lines of text. I think I'm gonna put this in the upper right hand corner. All right, so that's looking pretty good. Obviously I'm not done, but this is as far as I'm gonna go for this demo. So once you have those 25 words in a word cloud that's interesting using scale, typefaces, playing with orientation, so rotating. Also remember only two typefaces, although you're welcome to use multiple weights if you'd like, like I was showing earlier. You have your eight cultural associations, you have that RGB and CMYK breakdown, and you have a unique color name. You're pretty much ready to go. So I'm gonna go ahead and press W just so I can see what this will look like in a PDF. This gives me a pretty accurate view of what I'll see when I export this piece. And I think it's looking pretty good. Everything's where it should be. It's following that template structure. I have the right information, although I maybe don't have the right quantity of things. So I'm gonna go ahead and export this as a PDF. Obviously you should save this ahead of time. You should be saving as you're working through the file. But the next step is that export. I'm gonna to navigate to where I wanna save it, Adobe PDF print, so go ahead and click save. I'm gonna make sure this is on smallest file size, which it is, I'm gonna leave everything else alone, I wanna use the default settings for that. We only have one page here, so all is perfect, but you might need to adjust those if for some reason you created extra pages. And I'll go ahead and click export. And that'll create a separate file where I saved it that I can upload to the learning management system for grading. So that's pretty much it on this assignment. As always, you can email your instructor if you have further questions or need any assistance. But I hope you enjoy learning more about cultural associations and related words with color so that you can really control how you use color from a symbolic perspective and understand how powerful color can be as a symbolic tool for communication in the work that you do as a designer.